Thank you. Thank you, Jaume, for uh, the presentation. And uh, well, you know, yesterday when I finished my talk, uh, I was a little bit sad because um, in the title of my mini course, uh, there appeared the, the word bifurcations and I said nothing about bifurcations. So uh, I promised myself to, to, to start today to speak of concrete bifurcations in piecewise linear system. But before, before that, uh, I, I wanted to present a major example is uh, it's called the, the muscle. The muscle, mejillón in Spanish, is just, a, a, you know, it's a mollusk or something. Eh? And is uh, the name is just because the 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 this system has a limit cycle whose shape is that is like a muscle. Mm -hmm. This is the reason for for the name. Then this is a exercise uh, which is uh, structured in five in five uh, in five steps. And uh, uh, well. I will skip this uh, this uh, example now. Um, probably we will uh, retake it uh, later, because my 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 goal today is uh, start this talk uh, speaking about bifurcations. Then, just some explanation on the well. This is a simple exercise so, to pass sorry, Enrique, but in this sorry? example. So uh, in this example, you have not bifurcation. You have a... not at all. It's it's, a, it's an example of a continuous piecewise linear system because you you can see here uh, that this part, as we say yesterday, this part is equal in both systems, in both in both sides. So the system the, the system is uh, continuous the, the the separation line is of course as always in this mini course is the the y axis and uh, uh, his system uh, i want to stress that linear li pure linear system has cannot have limit cycle because when when they have uh, closed orbits if the system is pure linear then we have a center, and then we have uh, the, the full uh, phase plane uh, completely foliated by periodic orbits, and they all are non isolated. So, uh, to get a linear cycle, you, you must have a real nonlinear system. And this is a real nonlinear system, uh, it's piecewise linear, but globally speaking, it's a nonlinear system. So, the, 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 uh, the objective of this problem is just to justify the, the uniqueness and uh, the system and uniqueness and stability of the, the limit cycle. And in between, we must introduce new techniques that uh, they, they are not, not, not the, they are not, not appearing still in, in our course. So my, my original idea was to uh, to solve this uh, this uh, example uh, and taking advantage of this example to introduce new techniques, eh? little by little, like this last one of uh, Masera approach to to justify the the uniqueness and stability of the limit cycle, but also to introduce the half return maps. Well, some some of these concepts appeared um, yesterday in the in the in the conference, in the lecture of uh, Tiago de Carvalho. And uh, well, uh, this will be, will be solved, I hope, uh, later or maybe tomorrow, but tomorrow on, on Thursday, in the last, in the last, but we must start to speak about uh, bifurcation. So I will erase the, the whiteboard and, and I will put the, the word Bifurcation. Oh, oh, this is not good. 
Maybe I wait many minutes in erasing this, but for these moments, I have the solution, which is You know, it's, it's just a uh, help for, for the hands to avoid the, the pandemia, but it's very good for, for erasing the, the whiteboard. Okay, then as provided, let's introduce the first bifurcation which is the so-called the voluntary equilibrium bifurcation. Uh, usually Usually, this is uh, a rigid I as B, E, B. Well, the, 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 this is the, the simpler, the, the simplest bifurcation weight you can have in, in a, in a piecewise linear system. Let's start with the continuous case, and then, and then we, we will uh, study a little bit the discontinuous situation. Take a P, P linear system in our PNR4 to avoid us as much parameters as we, as we can. So uh, we have something like this uh, for uh, say X negative to, to avoid subscript, I put here the, the subscript L for left and uh, the same here, but with different different trace and determinant. And let us take as the bifurcation parameter this constant. A to, to give it a prominent role, let me change this, uh, this letter for with oof, oof. this is not good. This is better. Let's change this. To emphasize the, 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 the parameter role, we change the name with mu. And for definiteness, uh, let's assume that uh, the left determinant is positive. Then we, we see easily that this system has an equilibrium point, which is in, in the coordinate, let's say X L bar, which is mu over TL. Okay, and of course, then the Y coordinate for the equilibrium point is just this, multiply by TL. The same here. 
here you have um, the equilibrium position is in mu over dr and mu dr over dr. Let us draw a, a picture of the situation. Assume, for instance, that mu is originally negative. We have this is the phase plane. And then let's, uh, let's draw the, the null clients, the vertical null clients, because as we as we said yesterday, as this system is in Ilian R4, uh, the, the horizontal null client is just a vertical line here, for instance, x equal to this uh, x bar L. So the, 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 the horizontal null client is just a vertical line, but what is most more important. If let's say, let's say that this TL uh, is negative, so for example, you get something like this. This is why this is the the vertical null climb on the left, and on the right, let us assume, for instance, but it is not important at this moment that this TR is positive. This is y trx. And as you, as you see, I put the, this, these arrows in, in vertical uh, in vertical cell, but with some sense because if I, I choose I, I choose this DNR uh, form in, in other possible just to guarantee that with this minus here, the rotation sense of orbit is the positive uh, sense, the, the counterclockwise uh, orientation. So the orbits, if rotate, they rotate uh, in the positive sense, uh, in the counterclockwise sense. Okay, then to start the play, we consider uh, to start that mu is negative. Let us assume mu negative. Then this equilibrium point is over on, on this. So, sorry, this question. There is a comment in the chat. There is a missing x in the right equation. Dr. Yes. X. Yes. 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 People. People are awake. Yes. Thank you. That that's that's that is the comment, no? I think. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, this X. Let, let us let us uh, write this with more more generosity. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Then I said, if mu is negative, then as I assume that this determinant is positive, you have this, uh, this value for XL, and then the equilibrium point is here. Uh, in fact, this is the horizontal null claim for the left system. What happens uh, to the, uh, to the uh, for the right system? Well, uh, if we assume that, uh, well, it depends on the sign of, of the determinant here. Huh? Let's assume that the determinant is uh, positive also, just to, to start. We will say what happens when the, the, the different, the, the, the determinant have different sign. Well, then this, this as new negative, this, this uh, value is negative. 
So the equilibrium position of the right system should be also in the left half a space. In fact, in fact, uh, we we could we could continue this line up to some point here, and then this equilibrium point is the point who, who is who is ruling the dynamics on the right side, but this is not in the right side. So uh, in that case, this is a virtual equilibrium. It's not a real equilibrium, but uh, in fact, is the, 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 all the orbits of the right side are exactly as the, if this, this equilibrium was, uh, was uh, real, but it's not real equilibrium point for the global system. Then uh, when moving, when moving the, the, the value of mu, this equilibrium point is approaching this, uh, the origin. And this other, the, the virtual equilibrium right, for the right system also will approach when mu approach zero, also approach the equilibrium point. So when mu is equal to zero, both equilibrium, the real and the virtual one, collide at the origin. And now we have only one real equilibrium uh, with, with a special characteristic because if, if, if you see this equilibrium point from the left, you, you see the, so, some topological type for the equilibrium point. But if you see the equilibrium from the right, you see another topological type. So this, this uh, boundary equilibrium, boundary equilibrium should be analyzed in detail case by case. Of course, if, if we cross the, 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 the y axis by increasing the value of mu, then the situation reverses because uh, the, the equilibrium of the left has to be virtual, and this becomes to be real. And now we have a real equilibrium on the right and a virtual equilibrium for the left side. Okay, so the value, the value mu equal to zero uh, originates some phenomena which are equilibrium. Uh, becomes a boundary equilibrium and crosses to become a real equilibrium also, but with a different topological type. Okay, so the equilibrium we have always only one equilibrium in all the in all the for all the values of mu, but with different topological type. This is the first bifurcation you can get in piecewise linear system, even in the continuous case. Of course. Uh, in the process, the, 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 the change of topological type in the equilibrium point can give rise to limit cycles, as, as we see in a moment. Because, for instance, you can have here some stable equilibrium. Here you get a in unstable equilibrium, and then orbits can go. Uh, around the point and, uh, and at the end converging to a limit cycle. Uh, note that we assume that all the two determinants are positive. Let's change this situation when the other uh, the other determinant is negative. But before that, before that, let's let uh, let's uh, name this situation. The equilibrium point changes from side to, from left side to right side, or vice versa. But we are always an equilibrium point. 
This is the, the so-called persistent scenario. Because we always have an equilibrium point. Okay, then let us change, let us change this hypothesis. Now, we assume that the determ determinant R is negative. Then everything changes in the following sense. For mu negative, we have also the equilibrium here, yeah. real equilibrium for the left side. But now, as the determinant on the right is negative, the, this quotient becomes positive when, when new and dr. So what we, what we have in, in, at the beginning for negative values of mu, we have a real, a real equilibrium point here also. And now, when we uh, move the parameter mu to become zero, this equilibrium goes there and this in that direction. And at the end, what happens is that the two equilibrium points, two real equilibrium points collide at the origin for mu, for mu equal to zero. And uh, when mu becomes positive, both equilibria become virtual because this one go over there and this other over there. So for mu equal to zero, there are no real equilibria. Uh, and this, uh, this is very interesting because you can have now another scenario which is called the non-smooth fault S scenario, which is characterized by the, the fact that the two equilibrium points, two real equilibrium points, collide at the origin and then disappear. They become virtual. And uh, in fact, uh, this situation is, is interesting because uh, we can have, for instance, uh, something that cannot appear in a smooth system, no? as is the case of the so-called uh, sudden focus, sudden focus, sudden focus pair, boundary equilibrium bifurcation, which is a special case of this non-smooth fall scenario. Mm? The sudden focus bed. In the sudden focus bed, you have some uh, face plane like this. Let me. Some equilibria. Some equilibria here, and then you get. A critical situation where no sorry no equilibria here no equilibria a collision of and this let me this situation mu equal to zero and finally for mu positive well is the, the reverse situation but uh, is you have something like that 
uh, select here and a focus here. And then, uh, of course, you, put, you can get uh, uh, also a homoclinic connection, uh, a situation like this, or even uh, a limit cycle surrounding the, the new focus. And the characterization of, uh, of this silent focus uh, under the equilibrium bifurcation is not, is not a, a simple problem because you have to, to compute the, the retro maps and uh, to compare if the, 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 this point, this point here is, um, is um, the, to study the relative position of these two points, just to get if uh, you have a clear connection, a, 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 a stable focus without limit cycle, or even with a, a unstable limit cycle surrounding surrounding the the, the new focus. Uh, I must say that this. Uh, this situation, silent focus pair, uh, I want just to stress that it's impossible, it's impossible in a smooth system. Because, you know, in, in a smooth system, uh, when you have uh, the collision of two equilibria, you, you have, of course, in a, non-generic situation with where the determinant is is zero and then uh, you are in the in the plane trace determinant you are uh, near focus and saddle you, you are in the border between uh, saddles and, and nodes so um, you you don't have no no sudden no bifurcation but no, never saddle focus uh, bifurcation like in this case. Just to mention it, some people are interested in, in this. Uh, a reference for this is uh, a paper by Javier Ross, Elizabeth Bella, myself in, in, in nonlinear analysis, real world applications. Uh, in the 19, uh, 20, 2018 uh, edition for that magazine. The, the detail is the boundary focus of the bifurcation in planar p wide linear system. So it's very easy to, to find in the web. Okay, so uh, I said uh, that. Uh, in, in any case, this boundary equilibrium bifurcations can give rise to limit cycles. And now I want to show you uh, the, some little movies about this bifurcation, which in fact can be, can be uh, extended for the case when you have more than, than two linear zones. Hmm? Uh, typically, as you know, uh, PY linear system appears in the, in the practice uh, more frequently with three linear zones because uh, the, the most most of the of the electronic and mechanical and whatever the the, the real devices have uh, uh, three linear zones and normally with some um, saturation level because you you cannot get infinity values infinite values for for the nonlinear characteristics. So let, let's change uh, this, the screen to see this movie. I hope you see something. Okay. You see the, the, the picture. Perfect. You see, you see the, the, the face plane of uh, a situation like uh, 
is this is the persistent a scenario for the boundary equilibrium bifurcation. Then let let uh, let the start the movie. You will see before before to start. Well, this these graphs, well, they are they are built with an uh, an application which we come from we come with the, with the operating system in in, in the Max, eh, in the which is called Grafer. So I am not a, an expert in in that, but uh, you you can look for in the utilities folder. You can get the Grafer, Grafer, and and then with some uh, with some time you get you can animate parameters and you can, can get this. I I have. Mm, I have to say that the, I selected in the in the vertical axis some points which are uh, marked by small circles, which are the initial point for the integration, mm, both forward in time and backward in time, just to to get a, a more 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 orbits. And uh, the other point here is. I don't know if you if you see my 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 pointer. I just hope so. But so here you you get the equilibrium the position of the equilibrium point, which is real, and you can imagine that there are another virtual here for the for the other side. Let, let's go to the to the movie. The movie uh, lasts for three seconds. So. Okay, so you you what you have seen is that the the, the equilibrium point uh, pass to the other side, and some limit cycles is generated because now we have on the on the right side a unstable focus, and the dynamics on the left side is of node or stable node time, and this is not uh, not a theorem, but you can consider it like this, that a stable node always win uh, against uh, an unstable focus. So the node is much more powerful than the focus. So you don't, don't get uh, uh, unbounded solutions. So there must be a limit cycle. You can move this to see uh, all other time the how this limit cycle starts and disappear going backwards okay well if if you are a good observer probably discovered that the, the size of the limit cycle is um, is changing in a linear way because the limit cycle is exactly with the same shape, but uh, smaller and smaller. But in in the, from the beginning, from the very beginning, when the, the parameter mu has a positive value, the limit cycle is the same. The only the only the only thing that changes is is the, the size, but it's exactly the same. That uh, suggests that there are some homogeneity with respect to the parameter mu. In fact, we can abandon this this uh, and come back to the to the blackboard. I, I suppose you are watching me now hmm? in the in the blackboard, hmm? and uh, we can uh, see that this uh, system is, is in fact is in fact uh, has some some homogeneous property about about the the parameter mu. Was our original parameter 
you know, like the black, the black board is so today in a rebel, rebel situation. Okay, as I said, the idea is that we can we can do an homogeneous scaling. By, by taking x, new x, new y, just uh, some constant k, k, x, y. And if you do this in both sides, of course, with some constant k, what you get is something like this, x, you get k acting and then kx is the the big k the big x sorry so, sorry and this k. k y is the big y just just a comment for the people that is not familiar with piecewise linear or piecewise systems yeah, when you make a change. It's important to take into account the separation line. With yes, this change, because if not, a lot of things can change. Yes, but if you if you do a global change variable like this, exactly. In this case, you have no problem. But in no general, problem at all. you always. I, I will I will speak about account. the problem of preserving the the separation line. And this is very important because this is a just a, a change in the scale for for the two axes. So this is not not problematic, but let me let me finish with this. Thank you for the observation. And now you see here k dl x minus k mu. This is again dl big x, but now you get here k mu so in the new in the new uh, coordinates which are just a change in the scale the parameter mu in both sides eh, because this change is the same for the both sides is just multiplied by the constant k and of course this system is completely equivalent to, to the original one so if you put here any multiple of new, you get the same situation for, that is the reason we see that the, 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 the shape of the limit cycle didn't change when moving the, the parameter mu, just growing and growing, but in a linear way with respect to the value of the parameter mu. For that reason, this parameter sometimes is called a modal parameter, this mu, is called modal parameter. What means that the, the value of the parameter is not important. The only important is the sign. So in fact, if you want to study this bifurcation, uh, what you can do is to consider that first mu equal to minus one, the situation mu equal to zero and finally mu equal to one. And with these three uh, situations, if you understand the three situations, you can imagine what happens in the, in the continuous movement of the parameter mu. Okay, uh, I have uh, I have two, two videos more about this boundary equilibrium bifurcation, but now with three, three thumbs to, to see that it, with, with this bifurcation, you can get even two limit cycles. Let me start with, uh, boom, boom, boom. wow. Okay. 
Now, uh, I represented here assisting with three, three zones. That, do you see the, the broken line in red? The broken line in red is the, the vertical nuclei, line, which correspond to, to assisting with three linear pieces. And uh, you get here as this uh, slope is negative, the trace is negative, you get a stable node. In the middle, when the, the, we move the parameter, the equilibrium will become, I think uh, it's also a node, but a, a stable, a plan, an unstable node, because now the trace is positive. And finally, we get again uh, a stable node. So when, when we move the, the parameter mu, which determines the position of the real equilibrium, we'll see that as limit cycles appears and disappears. Okay. Uh, I have I have another one. Maybe is is a little bit lost. Let me look for for. Mm. Uh, as Italian people say, manaya. Let me let me let me look for the for this in a moment. This one. Let me see. This one. Okay, I hope you see something. Now we change a little bit the other the other example is uh, again a new system with three linear pieces. But now I change it. Sorry, you know it, this the, the 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 direct problems. Now when when I move the 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 at the end, we don't we will not have a unstable uh, sorry a stable a stable node, but at a stable focus. And you will see that another limit cycle appears in just in another focus transition, like we are studying in the problem with two zones. So you get a big limit cycles, but integrating backwards, of course, you will see another limit cycle with grow, grow and both limit cycles uh, disappear in a sudden node bifurcation of periodic orbits. So let me go back backward to see again. And you can see unstable, unstable limit cycles appears here and grows and collide with the big one to disappear. So uh, in this case, you get a situation like here with two limit cycles. The, the big one is stable because uh, this system with the, well, as the, the two external zones are, are uh, or have a negative trace, negative divergence, you can show that the, the, all the, the orbits are bounded. And you get a stable limit cycle surrounding the equilibrium point. But now in, in, a, in a new boundary equilibrium bifurcation, and a limit cycle, this limit cycle is, is just using, as you know, only two linear zones. So this is uh, a, as a limit cycle that grows linearly, uh, linearly with, with the parameter, with the, the deviation of the parameter with respect to the corner. So you can guarantee that this limit cycle appears. And when this limit cycle becomes also of three zones, then can, uh, is, not, is not linear in, in size any longer and uh, collide with the, the big one, as, as, we, as, we, 
have seen. You know, this is almost colliding and then collide and disappear. Okay, I think that this is a good moment to finish my, my first part of the presentation and so get a, a 10 minutes break because uh, what we must do now is to pass to the, to the discontinuous situation to see that this boundary equilibrium bifurcation is in some, in some sense different and involve, also involves uh, pseudo equilibria, which is a subject that we can, was uh, explained yesterday, but I will repeat a little bit the explanation of, of Tiago yesterday in the afternoon, just to, to use my personal notation for the problem and to, to see what happens in the, in the discontinuous case. So I, I will, uh, we'll finish here uh, to get the the first break. If okay. if you agree, okay, okay. In ten minutes we go back. Exactly, uh, thirty, twelve thirty, more or less. Okay. okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to you. Okay, let's start again by considering the. The boundary equilibrium bifurcation in the discontinuous case. Then, as I said yesterday, when you have now here x is in R2, you have two systems separated by this the discontinuity manifold. The matrices are different, and the non-homogeneous terms are also different. I said, well, I think that I will not enter in, into the details, but uh, you must you must do a, a change of variables with, uh, pres with uh, that preserves the, this uh, boundary. And what is more important, the if you if you change some uh, the, the value of the y in, in the discontinuity manifold, this change should be uh, compatible in the in the sense that you don't destroy uh, possible periodic orbits. Then uh, the change for that is, as I said yesterday, uh, take now. New variables here using here the A12 parameter on, on the right times. I'm sorry, but people is calling me. I suppose uh, they want to congratulate me because the usual thing in my sense day which is today today is san enrique saint harry for for the friends so then uh, here we don't change the x except in this factor and now we take here these chains for the left part and for the right part and another different change, which is now minus A12 minus here, X is the same before the X and now, Hey, uh, if you observe the change in y is the same because y here is 
plus and here is minus plus y you see that the chain is the same for when x is equal to zero so you uh, if you have some periodic orbit here with this change you get a new periodic orbit probably different inside but you maintain the 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 closing property of the possible orbit in between probably you you have some sliding set uh, we comment in a moment so with this change and making uh, an additional translation in the in the y variable you get the Lienard form for this uh, family. As I said yesterday, if we have time, I will put a, an example for that. You, uh, you get uh, the linear form, which is this one, x dot, the t, uh, maybe instead of using the minus, I put TL, TL X minus Y, Y dot DL, some constant AL here, and then on the right, X TR, X minus plus some constant B, Y dot TR x minus some constant different constant here okay this is the dnr form for this family so i suggest an, an, an exercise to check the computations do a additional translation uh, there are some additional translation before this change to get the, this set of here. And so for, for the boundary equilibrium bifurcations in, in the discontinuous case, uh, we will assume this linear form. I insist, I insist that this linear form is uh, equivalent for crossing periodic orbits, for instance, but is not equivalent uh, for the sliding dynamics. As, as we are mainly interested in crossing periodic orbits, we can assume we can assume that this linear form. Okay, then as before, as before we can change, for instance, this AL as the bifurcation parameter, but now we have other parameters here, A, R, B. So before to do that, we should uh, consider the, the, possi the possible sliding set for, for this system. So before to uh, to comment some to do some comments about the, the boundary equilibrium bifurcation in this case, I will repeat the the basic the basic ideas ideas for for the the Filipov uh, sliding set and the Filipov dynamics uh, in a different probably with a different notation. Uh, in fact. I will not use. I will not use the the same notation that uh, Professor Giano de Carvalho used yesterday. And probably I will introduce some some problems, no? Well, because. In this kind of, of 
of subject the, the notation the notation are some 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 are not not you know not nothing different because you you get uh you get a uh, accounted with some notation and then let, let's consider the a general a more general situation even we we come back we come back to this family later then uh, in a general situation when you have a discontinuous system and some discontinuity manifold in between uh, you you get here some let's uh, Write this and here on the right another system. This uh, x could be in any dimension now, but we we have in mind uh, always the the planar case, no? Just to to and then let's call this half space sigma plus and this one sigma minus of course the the, the discontinuity manifold should be some uh, definition in terms of some function h where this function is zero in our case, uh, remain, uh, recall that this is simply the condition. This is here is just x equal to zero. Then the the idea, the basic idea of Philip convention is just to to see how behaves the two vector fields in a point of this uh, the continuity manifold. And uh, a simple way to to see in what direction go the goes the, the orbits is just to consider how how evolves the value of H along the orbits on each side. For instance, take an orbit, let's say X, a solution that you can convert in a cure, but an orbit on the left. Let be a solution in the left, left part. And suppose that for some uh, instant tau, you get you get some, some some orbit that arrives at the discontinuity manifold. But what, what we want to know is if the orbit go in this direction or in the opposite sides, to to see this is just we, we can assume that the, this sigma is defined in that way. Uh, this sigma plus is just defined by the point where th is positive, and here the opposite situation, the points where the value of H are negative. That is the reason I use minus and plus sin because uh, they indicate the sign of, in the phase space of the, of, of the values of H. How evolves the value of H? Very, very simple to see, no? Because we can evaluate H on this solution 
and to compute the derivative with respect to the time of this uh, edge. As you can imagine, you must apply the change rule for derivation for taking derivatives, and you get that uh, this derivative is just the gradient of H, uh, the scalar product with the derivative of X minus. But the derivatives indeed, uh, indeed is just the vector field. So what you get is simply this in, and this is not depending on the time because just depends on X. So this expression, if this is positive, you go in the, in the direction where the function H increases. If this uh, expression is negative, you get the, the contrary situation. And so this is the so-called orbital derivative. which is the derivative of the function H along the solutions of the left uh, vector field. Uh, this derivative is sometimes uh, also known called Lie derivative as, as my colleague Emilio Freire says, you, you must not disturb a software Lee for, for this derivative because it's just uh, a simple calculation. And this is denoted sometimes as L on F minus of the function H. Okay. The same can, can be done for, for the right side. So the derivative respect to time of the value of H in that solution on the right side becomes the gradient of the function H, the scalar product with F plus. Okay. And then if the two expressions have the same sign, then you get that all the, 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 the two orbits go in the same in the same situation in the same direction with respect to the to the discontinuity manifold. Uh, on the contrary, if the, the, the two expressions have different sign, then the, you get opposite direction, maybe. Uh, pushing on, on the discontinuity line of escaping from the discontinuity line. Well, in some, in some um, papers, especially I want to mention, I want to mention a paper by Kudnesov. I don't know how to write Kudnesov because Kudnesov well, wow. so uh, Rinaldi and Gragnani, I recommend this paper because uh, I have I have the paper here. and you know is this the first is proof of this cell. Net. And this is with S. Manaya. Kognetsov, huh? Rinaldi Gragnani. This paper uh, is, is uh, entitled One Parameter Bifurcation in Planar Filipov System. One Parameter 
bifurcation. Is uh, in the in the journal International Journal of Bifurcation and Chaos, uh, two thousand three. Well, in this paper, you you will find a clear exposition about this, not with the same notation, but the, the ideas are the same, and uh, they define a function. I will change a little bit the notation and. Uh, this function I call a suing function at sigma. This is suing function is just simply the product of these two expressions. So S of X is just the problem of the two scalars clearly when this function you know is positive you have that the, the two vectors points in the in a point of the, the continuity manifold in the same direction so you can you can sue, sue the solutions or uh, as uh, professor Caballo said yesterday concatenate concatenate in a natural way The solutions. However, when this suing function is negative, you cannot concatenate. I don't know if you can see the last part of the. Well, the, the idea is, of course, if the if the function vanish, one of the two factors of all of them vanish. And then you get the different possible situations. You can get uh, tangent, tangent points, visible or invisible from one side, from the other side, or even you can have a boundary equilibrium point because if the if the vector field vanish, this also vanish. So in between, in between, you have for s of x equal to zero, you can have mm, tangency points. or boundary equilibrium points, or even double tangency points, double boundary equilibrium points, or singular, more singular situations. But this is a generic case. And to solve the problem of how they find the orbits in the in the in this uh, case of this uh, sewing so function is negative what is normally done is just to define i will i will not distinguish between attractive or uh, scapping set I will speak about uh, a sliding set. Uh, nevertheless, this sliding set could be attractive in the transversal direction or repulsing it in the transversal direction with respect to the discontinuity manifold. And then this sliding set 
will be defined just by the points, the points such that the, the sewing function is less or equal to zero. Okay, so this sliding set according to the to the paper of Kublesov and and colleagues from Italy. Congratulations for the for the championship of the European uh, football. Then this is a closest set in the relative topology of sigma. On the contrary, the complements, the complementary set is called the crossing set. And in this set, you get the same, but with positive value for the sewing function. This is uh, an open set. As you see, the, the, the the boundary of the sliding set is determined by the point where the, the function, the sewing function vanish. So the boundary of the sliding set should be uh, tangency points or boundary equilibrium points or some other similar situation. What the, the idea now is just to, to uh, define Define in the in the case we have a, a negative value of the of the sewing function. That is, we have a, for instance the two vector fields pointing in the same. Uh, with, in the opposite sign with respect to the to the separation line, you can imagine that uh, here you have some sliding set. You have, for instance, a, a invisible tendency, and the, the the problem is now how to define the, the set. The, 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 the dynamics in the sliding set. In fact, the, the, the idea is just to reproduce in my point of view, what you, what you get if you uh, use in a naive way, a numerical simulator. You know, if you, uh, you put a system like this in a numerical simulator, um, under the condition when h is positive, use this vector field. When h is negative, use this other one. Uh, you get some, some, you know, some errors because as you need to, to do a step, an integration step, probably you get you get a little bit on the other side, and then you must correct to the, to the other direction and, and so on. Uh, as we explain in a moment. The, the, the idea of Philip of vector field reproduce in, in some way the, the, the what you get in a numerical simulation. The, the idea is just in the sliding set, uh, and you are forced to, to in this case, eh, it's very easy to see, in the, escape, in the escaping situation, the, the situation is, is not so clear, but. Uh, just to consider in the, the time backward, you, you get the, the problem solved. So in this, you get that you cannot go there and over there. You, you must be here until you get a tangency point, which is the one of the same point of the sliding set and you escape. Uh, you enter in the, in, the, in the crossing set, to say so. The, the idea is just to, to do a linear combination of these two vector fields. And so you define, you define the, the sliding or the sliding set of the sliding vector field 
sorry, the sliding vector field, a sliding vector field. As a linear combination, I want I wanted always to put this before, that's for some other reasons. In such a way, this uh, sliding vector fields becomes uh, orthogonal to the to the gradient of the function h, just to assure that you move on on sigma on the on the discontinuity manifold. So you must add here that the gradient of h times this new vector field punch. And now all you want, all you must to do is just a, a, a small computation for, for getting this, this condition because we can say that this is equivalent to uh, one minus lambda. I, I forget this, the, the X for, for a moment, plus lambda. minus this condition. Of course, we are assuming that these two quantities are different sign or the product should be zero, but let us assume that for the moment that there are different signs, this and this. Then you, you get that this lambda is just, uh, let me think a little bit, the difference in the, in the, here you get the gradient of A. Mm, and let me start here, that is F minus, and here the gradient of F minus, minus gradient of F plus, I think. Let me check. Mm. I think it's okay, but, but it's not very important. Eh? The question is that you get this value of lambda, of course, one minus lambda is just minus. Uh, Okay, then at the end, you get a, a, a little bit complicated expression, but uh, you know, the, the, the origin of the expression is just this idea. You don't need any more to get the, the sliding set, the sliding vector field, sorry. So finally you get something uh, a little bit okay we are assuming that uh, this denominator doesn't vanish let, let that let us uh, write this as the different uh, well let me let me change a little bit the expression just to avoid minus signs at the beginning. And then you get here this this scalar multiplying the vector field minus uh, minus this scalar. 
multiplying the plus vector field. And we are assuming that this denominator is different from zero. Otherwise, we speak of singular sliding points where we can assume, for instance, that the, the, in these in this points, the, the, the Philip vector field is just uh, zero. So you cannot, you can avoid this kind of singular situation. Don't, don't forget that this, this uh, two, the two times here uh, have opposite signs. So the, to be zero must be because one of the vector field is zero or one is zero and the other is a tangent. So these are the typically the, the stream points of the sliding set. Okay. And uh, we have the, the Philip of vector field for on the sliding set. And I think that this expression are are more easily to understand that uh, uh, with my in my opinion eh? and sorry if i i've uh, obtained or i want i want not to create any any controversy about this but uh, the, the 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 idea is that the the, the notation uh, as i said the brazilian notation for the philip vector field as you uh, must think of uh, x, big x and big y. So uh, this is, for me, is, is uh, better. In fact, I should mention another controversial point of view because uh, with these definitions, the, the sliding vector field is uh, uniquely defined and in fact uh, i want to to read some some uh, statements of the paper of kulnesot uh, rinaldi and gragnani because you know this is a this is a a question of point of view but uh, different point of view but uh, I want to mention that uh, if you don't allow uh, multiple choices for solutions, uh, they, the authors say that uh, it is possible to define a unique forward solution of, of every, in every point. Uh, in fact, they say, uh, Although the solutions are uniquely defined, both forward and backward in time, the system is not invertible in the classical sense, since its orbits can overlap. Uh, this is a key for, point for me. The orbits can overlap, but if you uh, consider a point as an initial condition, you get only one orbit starting at this point, maybe remaining in the sliding set, maybe, uh, you know, uh, for instance, when the, the sliding set is, is uh, repulsive, if you are in the sliding set, you continue all the time in the sliding set. You cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot admit that the orbit escape. The orbit will escape if you are not in the sliding set, in my opinion. Then if you adopt, uh, only if you adopt, I think, uh, this is a point to, a point to discuss in other, in other moment, but if you allow uh, that one orbit starting in the sliding set can uh, maybe following the sliding set, maybe escaping, then um, at least, uh, you adopt a unique criteria, you get non-determinist system. A non-determinist system, and probably in that case, you can get chaos. 
you can get chaos in a planar situation, but it should be a non-determinist chaos. Well, this is a point to discuss in another, in another situation. Uh, well, uh, I wanted to come back here, hmm? to come back here and um, just to, to show how these concepts apply to our family. And then if I, if I have time enough, I will, uh, I will try to convince you that this, uh, this uh, sliding vector field uh, defined as the, as the only combin convex combination that becomes mm, orthogonal to the, to the gradient of H is in fact the, the natural the natural thing to, to adopt. Just uh, in a moment, let us comment here what happens for with this expression. Then, in our family, all the concepts are really, really elementary because if you want to compute the sewing function, what you get is you get that, uh, for instance, the, as uh, our function h is just the identity x for x, then the gradient, the gradient of h in every point of, of the separation line is just the vector one uh, zero. So the, the, the gradient of H acting on F of F, the minus vector field, which is this, is just the first component, but as you must take x equal to zero, is just minus y. You see, here for the right side, this expression. Well, in fact, we must put here x y, but. Uh, because I must not combine vectorial with the scalar notation, is just here the first component, but with x equal to zero. So minus y plus v. So what is the what is the sewing function here? The sign function, in fact, is depending only on y, is the product of these two functions, that is. So it is clear that this function will be positive. Let me combine all the possibilities. Positive, if uh, y is negative and this is y negative and y minus b minus b or y is positive and y is bigger than b negative. And this is the key point to define the if y is in between zero and b. Okay, then you see that in this case, the sliding set is very, very easy. It's just a segment. For instance, if you assume this is the origin, 
and you put here B, assume positive, then the sliding set is just, just this seven. Okay? And in fact, in zero or in B, this is the, the, the Y axis, no? You should give, should, should have a boundary equilibrium point or a tendency point. In fact, another, another, in this case, for instance, the, the function H is just the X. So if you want to, to know the, which is another interesting point, if you want to know the tangency points visible or invisible, then only you have to, to compute this just the, the second derivative of the second orbital derivative. So that the second derivative of the function h along the orbit of the, of the vector fields. But this in, in our case is just to compute x dot dot at sigma. Then for instance, for the left part, this is just take derivatives here again, to get the second derivative of this expression, that is TL and again TL X minus Y minus Y dot. And of course, take the points at sigma, as you see, what you get here is is, um, is uh, okay is T, TL minus TL Y plus A. Okay. Uh, for the left, this is for the left for the left vector field. But uh, don't forget that the, the left vector field, the, the x dot, that is the gradient of h f minus this function is just this minus y. So if you have a tangency, this y should be zero. Is a tangency point. Then, in the tangency point, the only thing what matters is just the constant, the constant a. So the constant a, a l in this case, a l. The constant a. So if the constant a is positive, what we have is just the the the, the the dot dot x is positive. So what you get for, for the, the x of, 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 of tau is, is a minimum, okay? It's a minimum. Then if you have a minimum in, in this point, for instance, the, the L is positive, what you get is a minimum for, for the solutions. You get something like that. A minimum for, for x, then, the tangency is invisible. So AL positive, invisible. And uh, invisible tangency point. No? If, you, if you compute the, the things on the right, the, the computation are the same, but, but now there appear a, a point B, but uh, here the, the Sorry, it was here. The, the tangency point appears in y equal to b. And then what you get is that for the right part, 
also you get that x dot and a uh, tangency point which is now the point zero g is just ar so the sign of ar uh, says if and now the criterion is the diff different because if you suppose that this r is positive you get a, a minimum for x but a minimum for x is just a tangency a visible tangency here visible because you get the, the orbit the tangent orbit is in in the in the right region okay well then uh, let me think okay all, all, all this comes from how behaves now the 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 boundary equilibrium bifurcation in this continuous system well i i think i have no no much time for for going to the details but it, let me let me just uh, uh, show something so suppose that now uh, as before uh, you move this parameter a a a a l let change let change the the symbol and now put here a mu and assume as before that this determinant is positive just to get uh, something like before so you when you have a, a equilibrium branch uh, moving on on the vertical line So that when mu is positive, you are here, for instance, and you moving the parameter mu, this point becomes a boundary equilibrium point. What happens now? Because at this point, the complete vector field vanish. We go here and we say that this uh, F minus vanish. Uh, and then this also varies because this is the gradient by f -men. So the two terms in the definition of the sliding vector field vanish. And so when this equilibrium is a boundary equilibrium point, it also becomes an equilibrium for the sliding vector field. Okay? So uh, I think I will not do the computation because uh, uh, you can use the implicit function theorem to, to study what happened, but the, the, the two scenarios I commented before, uh, now uh, again, they appear, but combining equilibrium from the left side, for instance, and pseudo equilibria. Pseudo equilibria, recall that pseudo equilibria is just equilibria for this vector field. When this vector field vanish, we have a let let use a different tilde until the x is a cell equilibria, and now the 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 boundary equilibrium bifurcation is a combina and combined effect of the colliding of a real equilibrium point, which becomes a boundary equilibrium point, and probably, yeah, well, it's, it's all, always that. Maybe you have that moving the parameter mu to positive values, this boundary equilibrium point, which is also a pseudo equilibrium point, moves along the sliding set. Okay, and uh, this is a the persistent scenario. The equilibrium becomes a boundary equilibrium and then a pseudo equilibrium. Or you can get again the non-smooth fall scenario, so that now the the the, the contrary uh, situation appears. You have 
a real equilibrium, a pseudo equilibrium point in the sliding set, and th these two collide and disappear. So this is a, 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 the, 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 the analogous situation for the continuous case, but now involving pseudo equilibrium okay, in, the, in the collision. Okay. Uh, maybe I, uh, I wanted to, let me try a couple of minutes uh, to know if possible uh, to convince yourself that this definition the, of, the, of, the, of the sliding vector field is natural. Huh? And what, what we do is just to, to do a trick, a trick. And the trick is just to simulate what a, a, a computer uh, not well prepared. No? Uh, let me recall that this a is equal to zero and let's allow to overlap uh, the, the left frame with the right frame. So I will draw here a line for the manifold corresponding to some epsilon positive. And then uh, let us reproduce what a numerical method with uh, 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 integration step will do to, to, to see that this sliding vector field is natural. So if we start in a point here and the, you come from here and let us assume that this is our initial condition, but the, the, the numerical method don't, don't, don't see that this is the real uh, border that they have a some error here and becomes from this point to this point B. And now the numerical method um, detect that we must change in the other direction because now we must use the, the other the other vector field. And then you go there to the point C. And this combination uh, can be shown that can be shown that in the limit, when you take this epsilon tends to zero, gives this. And if an if way to see that is just to think of this vector as velocities. And then uh, if this is f minus and this is f plus, and that, uh, we think as, as velocities, it's clear that the time you spend in going from A to B is determined by the uh, time less, so time minus, time minus is just the, the distance, uh, let me say this, uh, the, the distance in, in the transversal direction Let me think, this is the transversal velocity. La traverse, no, it's, it's just, oh, sorry, let me, let me, I think the, I think I, I lost a little bit lost. Ah, uh, sorry. This is the transversal velocity, no? Velocity is a space over time. So time is, okay, velocity, okay, it's okay. And the other time spent here is just the same, but with the other vector field. So if you want to, to see the, the, the global effect, 
uh, you must define the a new velocity, which is the new vector field we want to obtain, which is uh, the uh, sorry a, a little a little important little that this should be to to have a minus sign because this this uh, traversal velocity is in the opposite to get a positive value for the time you need to put here this and then if you now get the velocity you must assume you must the vector you assume the, this vector this vector is just the velocity f minus by uh, multiplied by the time plus the time this is the the total space and now divide by the total time and take limit it, limit when this this uh, error tends to zero what you get is an expression like this lim, lim, of course this vector field should be evaluated in different points but at the end when you don't, you take limit uh, in with this one tends to zero you get the know that this tau, tau, if this is that uh, uh, let me let me the times times is just I don't know if I commit commit some mistake, but uh, uh, mass. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Means uh, let's go here. Let's go here. Minus here. Well, I think. Probably I did some mistake because now I a little bit, but uh, in the limit, what you get is precisely because this epsilon cancel and the, the point where you must evaluate all the terms and you get finally this. I don't know. I was a little bit busy at the end, but this is time for a stop because I I waste my time. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your talk. Uh, you provide all the details, and this is nice. Uh, if some people have some question, if not, uh, we left. We close this session, and uh, we will continue in an hour and a half, approximately. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your attention for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.